What's up guys, Alex here, and today I want to talk about something that you guys ask me about constantly, which is my orchestral template, or how I set up this template and why. So uh, the reason why you should set up an orchestral template is to you know, save time when you write music, so be faster, more productive, but most especially to have more control on your track and to be able to read and interpret your track really easily so that for example, when you're opening, like if you have a project that you haven't opened, you know, in a few days, when you're opening it up, since uh, it's ordered and detailed, detailed and labeled, you're still going to be able to read it and to not get lost into it because you have an organized template. So I'm going to show you now how my template works and why I set it up, set it up the way I did. So let's start by looking at the instruments. I tend to use Contact for my orchestral sounds. And Contact is this thing here, which, which is a sampler, which I think deserves its own, you know, tutorial. Because if you do not, do not know how it works, there is a lot to be said and it will take too much time to explain it. So I'm going to, I think, either link you to uh, some articles or videos that explain how it works, or I'm going to make a video myself, but I'm not going to talk about how it works in this clip. Although I'm going to say that the way I manage contact is different from what I did when I was a beginner. So here, for example, yeah, I have many different instances of contact in this project. And yeah, in my template, I have this something like 10 instances, instances of contact, which are completely empty. And then some instances of East-West play as well, which is the equivalent of contact for um, East-West libraries. So initially contact, in my template is empty and um yeah and this and this example it is not because this is a track which i've been working on so it's already filled with instruments and samples and, and all of that but in the beginning stage contact is empty and the way i use it is uh, i have many different instances of it and i dedicate a single instance to a type of instrument so for example here i have a contact for strings here i have a contact for brass and one for choir and so on so again, I'm not going to explain how, how contact works, but I'm going to show you how I use it. So instead of having, like, as you see here, I have many different, different um, instrument patches loaded inside the same contact. And this is something I learned to do after. And because when I was a beginner, I usually opened one single contact for one instrumental patch. So here I have 11 patches of string instruments. And what I will do back in the day is open 11 different contact instances like this one for uh, every single patch because I did not, did not know how these MIDI outs worked and how I could route this to, you know, be read by contact. So um, now that I'm a little bit more expert, I use one instance only. And what I do is um, basically you, I open many patches and for every patch, I dedicate it a different MIDI channel. So the first violins patch is dedicated to the, to the MIDI channel one, as you can see here. The violas is MIDI channel two, and this is MIDI channel three, and so on. And then I have these MIDI outs, which are basically this um, MIDI out. A, a raw MIDI out looks like this. What I did is I created 11 of these, and I link them to port one, which is the port that this contact instance is using. As you can see here in the settings, input port one. So this means that this MIDI out that is linked to port one is going to send information to contact, which is set in the port one. And other than that, it's going to send information to the, through the MIDI channel number one. So when I press a note here, This, say for example, this D6 note is going to be sent through port 1 to the MIDI channel number 1. And that corresponds to the port this particular instance of contact is um, assigned to and MIDI channel 1, which is the MIDI channel that this first violin's patch is assigned to. So the note here goes to the first violin patch of this contact um, instance. Then I have many other channels like this one. Like for example, a first violin short here is going th uh, through port one, so to this contact instance, but channel number eight. 
and when we play it, it's playing this other patch here, which has like this patch is dedicated to staccato violins, so I called it first violins short. Anyway, another thing I did with the MIDI channels is to set up different uh, MIDI control commands to them. To them. So as you can see here, I have a mod and a volume and expression, which are the main control commands um, that you use when you write orchestral music. And I talked about this three in the strings tutorial I made um, a few months ago. So if you do not know how these work, go check out that video. But I'm going to show you how to set them up because when you first open your MIDI control, sorry, when you first open your MIDI out, there are no commands set up. So say you want to set up some modulation wheel expression and volume which are um, control command number one and uh, seven and 11. So the thing you need to do is to go here, right click and go on configure. And this allows you, allows you to set up this control. So you, should, you, know, you pick a name. So this is going, is going to be the mod wheel and the mod wheel is channel, is control command number one. So as a controller, I'm going to set one and boom, I have my mod wheel. Then I go here and I set the expression. I'm gonna call it exp, which is parameter number seven, if I'm not wrong. And the volume, which is parameter number 11. So this is how you set them up. And having this here allows you to, you know, interchange them and move them as you say, listen to your song. And it also allows you to create um, MIDI controller curves and events curves really easily because you just right click and click on edit events and boom, you can already draw, you know, your lines without having to select the control command from other sources. Like say, for example, uh, here, you know, you can go here directly and right click and do edit events and it's really easy. So another thing I did is create groups in here because as you can see if i click here on strings we are only going to see the midi channel and the contact instance which is linked to strings and instead of you know seeing all the instruments in the song and this is really useful for say for example i open a strings pattern and i see all of this uh it's kind of you know hard to keep track of where the strings are but if i select the strings channel now it only shows you, so shows me the channels um, which are inside this group. And since the group selection is uh, currently working on the strings, if I click on a pattern that has different instruments, so let's say, for example, I click on the pattern of the choir, it's going to jump to the choir group. So when you have a certain group selected here, every time you change your pattern to uh, a pattern with instruments from another group, it jumps automatically to that other group. And this is useful when you have a crap load of instruments. And uh, yeah, it saves you a lot of time. But the way to set up the groups is, say, for example, you have, yeah, let's say, for example, these four MIDI channels. Say I want to create a group for these four MIDI channels. The thing I need to do is press Alt on my keyboard, Alt G, and it creates a new group, and I, which I have to name. I'm going to call it group red and now among all the groups here i'm going to see group red which is the group that i created for these four instruments if you want to delete a group you, you keep uh, you click with the right click of the mouse on the group name and click on delete filter group and bam you're done so let's take a look at the mixer now and the mixer is something i already talked about in a few videos before but i'm going to talk about it more in depth now so um the way I organize my mixer is through, um, you know, I have on top a master channel where I put an EQ and some, you know, a compressor here, for example. Then I have a dry channel, which collects the dry signal of all the instruments in the track and a wet channel, which collects the dry instrument as well, but sorry, the dry signal as well, but process it through this reverb. Then below this channel, we have a group of buses for every instrument group. So I have a bus for strings, one for brass, one for choir, etc. And below these buses, sorry, these buses, there are um, separated mixer uh, tracks for every single instrument type. So for example, we have the strings bus, which is um, 
the sum of all the signals from the first violins, second violins, violas and cellos and double basses mixer tracks. So this way I can say process the first violins different differently. So for example, here on the first violins I put a compressor, on the second violins I put this EQ and etc. So every single you know string type has its own processing, but it's then sent to the same bus. So here in the strings bus, the thing I do is I have this general EQ which with which I can shape the overall um, string sound. For example. Instead of having to say, say, if I want to put a high pass on the strings, instead of, instead of having to, you know, draw the high pass curve and open a high pass EQ on every single of these string channels, I just put a high pass on the strings bus and it filters them all out. And uh, another reason why I use this bus is this, which this is something I talked about in the reverb tutorial, but yeah, I'm going to show you what it does now if you didn't check out the tutorial. So this XYZ controller basically controls the reverb amount and the panning, so it determines the position of the string section in the the digital room we're creating inside this track. So I have one of these and one EQ like this one on every single group bus for the instrument so that for every single instrument group, I can decide where to place it into the room. And uh, yeah, I also have this stereo enhancer to, you know, draw automation curves for the whole um, string section. So here I have you know, this automation curve here, which regulates the volume of the overall string section while the track plays. And it saves me the trouble to, um, say, create an automation clip for every single string instrument if I want to lower them all together. So, yeah, having a bus like this allows you to manage all type, like uh, all um, the instruments of a certain type together without having to create endless automation clip or without having to tweak endless reverbs or endless you know eqs the same way you just manage the overall signal through this single bus and then this single bus is sent to the dry and wet channel and um, yeah but yeah it still gives you the freedom to um, manage the different instruments um, independently so this helps you during the mixing phase, because when I mix a track, I tend to go um, top down. So I start by mixing the, the sections separately. Then if there is a certain instrument specifically, say, in the string sections that needs to be adjusted in a particular way, I can go even third, further down and edit, you know, that instrument like I did here with the first violins where I put uh, this compressor because um, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> for reasons which I'm not going to mention right now because this is not a mixing tutorial. But yeah, that's how I manage my mixer. And as you can see here, every single, you know, bus has its own color, which is the same color of uh, the different, you know, uh, mixer tracks that fit inside that bus, which is the same color of the channels. Um, so here the strings are violet. The strings bus is violet and the different strings um, instrument mixer tracks are violet so yeah that helps you way um, yeah it helps you a lot into um, making your project ordered and it helps you into keeping your mental sanity while you work on your track because you know where everything is and with orchestral music it's really difficult sometimes to keep track for of where you put this and that because the projects tend to look, you know, kind of huge. So having this organization really helps you into being more fast, having more control and yeah, keeping your mind mentally sane. Okay, so let's say we want to split the strings bus into two different mixer buses. So one for strings of high register, which I'm going to call strings high, and one for strings of lower register, so for cellos and double basses. So we go here, we create, a, we name this channel strings low. 
And what I do for all my strings busters, busters is that I right click them and I dock them to the left. And I move them along with the rest of the buses here. So now we have this string's low channel. And say we want to, sorry, we have this string's low track. I always get confused with the terms. Say we want to send the cello and the double basses track here. If we were to send the channels only, only we could, you know, click on the channels. And as you can see here, below every single mixer track, there is an arrow. And we just go with the, the cellos track selected. We go on the strings load uh, track, right click on the arrow and click on route to this track only. And what this does is basically says to FL Studio, send the signal of this track to this track only. So now the cellos are going to be sent to the strings load uh, track. But say we want to send multiple channels at the same time to a bus. What you need to do is to click, sorry, you need to press control shift on your keyboard and then you left click on all the channels you want to select. And you also left click on the channel, sorry, you left click on the tracks you want to select and you left click on the channel, you left click on the track you want to send them to. So now that they're all selected, you right click on the track you want to send the cellos and the double basses and you go on track routing and you click on route selected to this track only. So it does the same thing we did with the cellos, but it does at the same time with multiple uh, tracks. So now the cellos are being sent to this channel here. As you can see, they are separated. So another cool thing you can do with the mixer if you set it up with buses this way is to say for example press alt s on a bus and as you can see what it did is it it, it turned off every single mixer track which has not which is not tied to this um particular bus so here it like it selected only the choir so when we play the song here we're only going to hear the choir so yeah it's pretty much as going here in the choir and right clicking same thing but doing, in, doing it in the mixer is faster, so I'm going to show you why. So say, for example, we have this passage here. And say we want to analyze the orchestra, so we, on, we only want to hear the orchestra and leave out the percussion, etc., and all the rest. Um, selecting all the orchestral groups here will take quite some time, but with the mixer, I just go here and I select all the orchestral uh, buses, Alt S, and boom. So yeah, this gives you even more flexibility and speed when isolating instruments in your track. Okay, so that's it for the template. As you can see, it's quite easy to use. The difficult thing is to set it up because you have to create all these MIDI channels and uh, create the mixer bus and route everything. So yeah, it can take quite some time to set up your template. But in the long run, it's going to save you a lot of time and make your composition sessions much more comfortable. So it's definitely a worthwhile investment of time to set up a template for you. But... Um, if you want to use my template, I just uploaded it on Patreon. So if you're supporting me there, you're going to be able to download it right away and use it yourself. Just know it's done in FL Studio 12. So you need FL Studio 12 to read it. And uh, you also need contact to read it because it has empty contact instances into it. So that's it for the tutorial of the day. And uh, if I forgot to mention something or if you have some questions about templates and things I mentioned in this video, just ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. So, yeah. Sorry if the tutorial, the tutorial came out a little bit late, but I wasn't able to record yesterday. So, yeah, that's why I'm releasing, releasing it on Sunday. But, uh, yeah, I hope this video helped you out. And that's it for today. See you next time.